Okay, so I'm going to get this uh, ceiling crack. Actually, there's two ceiling cracks on this ceiling. This one turned out to be about four feet wide. It looks like it's sagging in between the trusses. I'm not sure if there's furring strips up or not. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut out this tape joint where it's failing. Because if you try and tape over a tape joint, especially if it has a texture, it's just going to be a hump. So you want to you know, keep the mud confined to the tape joint after it's removed when you're doing the repair. This tape joint was a little bit of a booger. It stuck really good. So it wasn't the paper tape that was failing. There was just some movement. So I won't show you the whole process of uh, getting all the tape out. But again, I like to get all the tape out. So when I retape it, it's just nice and flush and not bowed down from the ceiling so basically I just had to go inch by inch and pick this thing it didn't pull like a regular tape joint would pull if there was a problem with the tape I am going to put some guards on the tape joint once I get all the tape and loose uh, mud and joint compound removed right here I'm scraping just on the skip trial because there's a sand so I'm just smoothing it out a little bit so it's not so rough so I don't get any chatter on my knife. If you look close, you can see that moving a little bit. I'll show you a little closer in a minute. So I'm going to start putting up screws where I can get them in the furring strip or trusses. They're an inch and a quarter drywall screw. The drywall seems to be pretty solid. So I'm going to get this screwed and then hit it with the guards and then go work on the other one and see exactly what we got going just kind of tapping around to hear where the stud is you can hear the difference it's hollow then solid you always want to sink your screw heads just below the drywall all right there's the tape joint got the guards on it assess the situation there's some movement, so I'm going to show you a trick to keep that movement from cracking your tape joint. I'm going to insert a furring strip in between the two trusses or furring strips. So I'm just scoring the width of the furring strip. I'm going to do another one over here. Keep watching. I'm going to show you this whole process. I put the guards on just to seal any dust or anything and as you can see the drywall is a little gouged from removing that tape joint. So next you want to take your keyhole saw and just cut the scores and it doesn't have to be perfect because what you're going to do is reuse this little piece that you're cutting out and it's going to fit perfect as long as you don't break it. So be a little gingerly with that. So you just pull that out, set it aside. Then you're going to want to take your furring strip and put a screw in it so you can pull down on it. Once it's up in the hole, then you'll be able to get screws in it. You're going to screw through the existing ceiling into the furring strip, spanning across the tape joint. See where I'm pulling the screw? That allows you to put a screw right through the ceiling into that furring strip. Again, if you don't have that screw to pull down on, that furring strip's just going to move around on you. So I'm going to put another screw on each side just to keep that from moving at all. If you're enjoying my videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell notification to get alerted whenever I post a new video. Okay, so I'm gonna remove my set screw and replace with the same piece of drywall I cut out. Again, you wanna sink the screws just past the surface of the little piece of drywall. I'm going to be using a fiberglass mesh tape and a 20 minute 
setting type joint compound, which will make this super strong. I guarantee this isn't going to crack again unless there's some truss uplift or something like that. All right, I'm going to speed this one up a little bit. Won't show you all the details. Keep watching because I'm going to show you uh, how I mud this after I put on the fiberglass mesh tape. Again, I'm just cutting that little piece out. I will reuse it. Hey, I want to give a shout out to Kevin Eaton for always having comments on my videos and helping out in the comments. He used to work at Lowe's, so he's got a lot of good knowledge. Thanks, Kevin. All right, pulling down on that screw. Going to attach that fern strip through the ceiling. If you got any questions about ceiling cracks or any kind of drywall repairs, texture matching, leave them down in the comments. I'm happy to answer your questions. All right, going to put this piece back in. Get this paper out of the way. So yeah, people always say, oh, fiberglass mesh tape isn't any good. They probably are using all-purpose joint compound on the fiberglass mesh tape. Most manufacturers recommend using a setting type compound, which is a powder form compound. All right, so I got the fiberglass mesh tape. I'm going to keep it in the trench where the old tape was. That way there's nothing sticking down from the ceiling. That's how you get a flat repair. You can also get a flatter repair using uh, fiberglass mesh tape or even a uh, new tape called Fibafuse. I got a video of that too. I'll leave some of my most popular videos down in the description and also the first two videos that I've done on this project where I showed you how to seal up some uh, brown drywall paper after it was torn because the baseboards were not scored before removal. You want to go over the fiberglass mesh tape one more time to make sure it's all stuck real good. All right, there's the 20 minute mud. It's a USG sheetrock Easy Sand 20. I already mixed it up. You can see that other repair shiny over there. That's the guard shining. I'll be mudding that next. Not in this video though. Just wanted to kind of keep it short and sweet. I'm keeping the mud concentrated on this coat in the tape joint area. Be sure to watch the next video coming out because I'm going to mix up a batch of 20 minute mud and try and hit every single one of the repairs in this house with one batch 20 minute mud i wanted to get this first coated and then i'm going to see how far i can get with 20 minute mud i also have a video coming out where i match this skip trial texture and i also do the mud work where the baseboards had been damaged Now you want to keep your first coat smooth, as smooth as possible anyways. You can come back once it's dry and kind of trim it with your knife, just scrape it. Try to avoid sanding until I get to about the third coat. Another pull. And that should be good to go. And if you want to step up your drywall, texturing, or painting game, be sure to hit that round icon in the middle of the screen now to keep up with all my latest videos. If you've got a friend that's a contractor or DIYer, be sure to share this video with them on Facebook or Twitter. Thanks so much for watching. There's more of my most popular video links down below in the description.